Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the concept of a point estimator and we're mainly going to be looking at the properties that are desirable in a point estimator. In fact, we're going to be looking at the properties that the point estimators, most of the point estimators we use in class have. So, uh, to illustrate this idea, let's first talk about what a point estimator is because you may not know what I'm talking about. A point estimator is a single number, just one number, that is used to estimate a population parameter that you're interested in. So something you want to know. So you have a single number used to estimate a quantity that you want to know. For example, in our classes we often use X bar to estimate the population mean, right? We use a sample mean, X bar, as an estimate of the population mean. That's a great example of a point estimator. That's a single number used to estimate a population value we'd like to know. Another example would be S, the sample standard deviation, that number is used to estimate the population standard deviation. Again, it's just one number used to estimate the population value. Okay, so what we're going to do is to kind of, uh, in a way, analyze the performance of three estimators that are all trying to estimate the population mean. And this is going to help us to understand the properties that we look for in an estimator. And uh, Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like we're all knowing, that we're omniscient, and we know where the true population mean is, something we seldom ever know in the real world, right? But uh, we're going to pretend that we know where the population mean is, and we're going to look at the performance of these three estimators, A, B, C, in trying to predict that value. And what these little dots on the graph are going to represent is um, a calculation of that estimator for a sample, right? So let's assume they all work with samples of size 50, just for argument's sake, right? So each one of these dots represents, say, for example, the value of A for a sample of size 50. So, you know, for example, if A had been X bar, this would be um, the value of X bar for one sample of 50 plotted on a number line. And remember, its goal is to try to predict the mean. Okay? So let's talk about how A, B, and C have done and try to figure out which one we would like to use if we were trying to know the true population value for mu and we had to rely on one of these estimators to get close to it. So try to think of it almost like a marksman, right? So if these were the results of a marksman shooting at the target trying to hit the mean, how would you judge A's performance? Well, first thing I notice is that it looks like A, the results of A's work here, are balanced around the mean, right? In other words, I had to stick my finger somewhere on the curve so that I could balance this shape if it was a three-dimensional object. I'd probably put my finger right there, which is where the mean is located. That's a really great quality. That means the average value for A seems to be the population mean. In other words, the average value of A is our target parameter. That's a really good trait. We're going to call that trait unbiasedness. So we're going to say here that A is unbiased. A is an unbiased estimator of mu because its average value is mu. It's the target. That's the thing it's trying to estimate, and its average is that thing. That makes it unbiased. So that's a really nice trait. Now, let's look at C. C also has that property, it seems, right? It seems like C also could be said to be balanced around the mean. So we're also going to say that C is also unbiased. Excellent. So it looks like the marksmen's uh, A and C, or the estimators A and C, have done a pretty good job with that respect, right? Now let's look at B. How did B do? Well, I would kind of estimate its average for this to be around there, right? which means that it's not where you want it to be, right? In fact, it's, it's constantly, if it's trying to estimate mu, it's constantly underestimating the value of mu, right? I mean, A underestimates too sometimes. It overestimates, though, in equal amounts, it seems, so that the average is still the population mean. C underestimates and overestimates, but the average is mu. This guy, his average value is down here, and if you thought that B was the same as the population mean in the long run, on average, you'd be wrong. And that's a really undesirable trait. So we're going to say that B is actually biased. So here's what we do. If we're trying to figure out which one of these three things we should use, we are going to eliminate B as a choice right away. Think of bias as being bad. B for bad, B for biased, right? That's not acceptable. A biased estimator is not an estimator we'd like to use. And you can see why, right? If there's a marksman, it never hits the target, right? Even if it does hit the target occasionally, on average, it misses. And that's not acceptable. These guys, on average, hit the target. Much better results. So we're going to discard B as an option. Now we have to decide between A and C. And this brings us to our next desirable property in a point estimator. Between A and C, the thing we're going to be paying attention to or being concerned with is that 
Um, you know, yes, they're both on average equal to the mu, but which one gets closer to the mean more often? Well, clearly C, right? And these points are centered at mean, these points are centered at the mean, but these are far more varied. In other words, when this guy misses the mark, he misses it by a pretty good distance sometimes, right? When this guy misses the mark, he's still pretty close. So he has the least variation among the two. In fact, we would say that he has the smaller variation between A and C, so we go with C as being the better choice. So C is the best choice between A and C because A is more spread out, right? And we know they're going to sometimes underestimate, sometimes overestimate, but C does that in a less extreme way, right? Because the points are generally much more clustered around the target. And that's the concept of having a smaller variance, right? Or a smaller standard deviation, right? So because it has a smaller variance, the points are more clustered around their center. If their center is the target, that's a really good thing. Think about a marksman that could hit all his shots right around the bullseye, right? Doesn't miss out so wide like this guy does, right? So in that case, between A and C, we're gonna cross out A as our option and go with C. Notice that A was unbiased, right? That was a good thing, but between A and C, since they're both unbiased, we go for C because it has a smaller variance. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is, um, you know, the possibility, let's say that C has the absolute smallest variance. If it does, we would say that it's not only unbiased, but it's the minimum variance estimator. So the minimum variance unbiased estimator if you put it all together. So minimum variance unbiased estimator. This is the trait that we like our point estimators to have. We want them to be unbiased but also have the smallest variance. I do want to mention though that the smallest variance by itself is not necessarily an important property. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say I have another estimator D. Let's say D does this every time. So every time you do a study with D, it reports that the average is there, let's say. Well, you could certainly say that D has the absolute best variation possible. It has no variation. It's perfectly consistent. It always gives you the same result. But it also always misses the target, right? So minimum variance without the unbiased part is useless, right? We want minimum variance unbiased estimators. Having just minimum variance is not an acceptable choice, right? So we can't have this. This is not an estimator of any value. This would be like having a marksman that can never hit his target, you know? You say, uh, well, every time he shoots, he always hits the same spot, but it's never the spot he's supposed to be aiming at, right? So if that's the case, that marksman is useless. The one that you really want is C. It's got the smallest variation, and it's unbiased, and that's the winning combination for a point estimator.